lost cause? No, I think, um, uh, you know, I, in today's environment um, and in general, uh, you know, uh, we encourage people uh, for startup businesses to, uh, you know, seek out uh, financing at, uh, at, at various banks, community or uh, commercial banks or otherwise. Uh, but they need to come, I think, uh, prepared with a, uh, uh, a marketing plan, uh, a business plan, um, who's going to run it, uh, what technical skills or uh, expertise is needed for that particular business. Uh, I think too often uh, we see people have these grand ideas to start a business and they have no plan. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, I think uh, uh, to kind of point them in the right direction, they need to understand that uh, Without the plan, it's probably going to be a hard sell to uh, borrow money and then uh, be able to, um, you know, uh, present a solid story as to, you know, why the bank should turn over X number of dollars to a company that's uh, in the early stages of uh, development. But uh, uh, I, th I think we encourage uh, that kind of entrepreneurship here in, the, you know, the area. Um, and... Uh, in the banking world, uh, we have SBA, uh, Small Business Association uh, Guaranteed Loans, which are, you know, subsidized by the federal government. Uh, those afford uh, uh, greater uh, percentage of uh, funds that can be, uh, you know, um, lent to uh, borrowers, up to 90 percent in many cases. So the smaller amount of initial investment by the uh, uh, business owner and um, a good plan, uh, it might be an opportunity for an SBA application. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're going to we're going beyond a lot of the questions that we we talked about, but uh, should make things more fun in a way. So, first of all, um, you're participating in this opportunity fund. Maybe you can explain a little bit about what that's about. Yeah, I, I think it's a it's a nonprofit orga nonprofit organization uh, here in San Jose. It, um, it reviews uh, loan requests from small business owners that have sort of niche businesses that fall outside the general parameters of uh, uh, the normal banking community. Mm -hmm. um, they're very viable, very profitable, but uh, based on um, you know their uh, uh, operating climate, uh, they generally have a little higher risk value. So the Opportunity Fund uh, looks at these applications and uh, uh, you pay a little bit higher interest rates because of the higher risk involved. Mm -hmm. But the uh, oversight uh, committee that uh, helps review these applications uh, are people like myself. Uh, we have about a half a dozen other representatives from the major banks and uh, community banks in the area. We meet when a, a loan package is being presented. And we kind of have the opportunity to question the underwriter as to, you know, why do you believe that this particular loan is, uh, uh, should be approved? So um, it, it, it takes into consideration uh, uh, those kinds of things that, uh, uh, like I say, with a community bank and, and the larger banks, that they don't have maybe the, the, the time and the personnel to uh, sit down at longer length with these sort of niche businesses businesses that fall a little bit outside the normal, um, you know, uh, markets that we deal with. But uh, uh, most of them that I've been in, uh, uh, have seen right now, have, uh, they've been uh, paid on time. I think they've mentioned something, a very minuscule uh, delinquency ratio on loans they've made in prior years. So um, it's another... Uh, avenue for people, uh, startup businesses as well as existing businesses to get initial funding. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do banks sort of specialize in different industries and, and things? Well, you know, over my career, uh, obviously the larger commercial banks uh, cover the full spectrum of, of, of loans from, you know, commercial, real estate, uh, consumer loans. Uh, some community banks I know locally uh, are we're focused on uh, uh, the real estate markets. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, I worked for a small uh, community bank in the East Bay that uh, focused more in construction lending a few years ago. Mm -hmm. So uh, they have their niches, mm -hmm. 
and I think um, if people are you know shopping for small business loans, they could do themselves some justice by you know making some initial calls to specific banks and say, hey, do you kind of maybe specialize in one area opposed to another, and here's kind of what I'm looking for, maybe uh, you know find a fit. Yeah. Um, because sometimes uh, you know all banks aren't suited for everybody based mm -hmm. on you know their needs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. And, I, and I'm seeing, too, more and more in today's uh, environment, uh, especially in the past year, more and more people shopping a bank before they come in to, to do something. So mm -hmm. they're kind of getting a feel for uh, the direction of the bank. And uh, uh, the first question they always ask is, you know, are you financially healthy and sound? So that is, again, upper mind with uh, more and more uh, uh, borrowers today. Yeah. So we're in Silicon Valley here in San Jose. Do you think that there's, let's just say, a higher interest uh, of the banks as far as maybe favoring um, tech businesses as opposed to, you know, other more maybe mainstream type businesses? Or well, I, I, what's your experience there? I, I think um, having worked for a number of uh, different banks in the Silicon Valley over the last uh, several decades, uh, uh, the larger commercial banks will. Uh, go after all uh, facets of the business. There are one or two uh, uh, community banks in the area that uh, do focus uh, more closely on the high-tech industries. Mm -hmm. And a lot of their uh, uh, lending officers and underwriters have a very solid understanding of uh, the, the high-tech world. Mm -hmm. uh, likewise, other company, uh, banks uh, might have a um, better understanding of uh, uh, manufacturing. Uh, there's, we have a lot of food processing industries here in the uh, Silicon Valley, and that well, we used to have a lot more. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and as you know, those co areas get consolidated and bought yeah. up. But uh, yeah, and again, that's where I, I think you know, uh, taking a survey and shopping a bank that might be uh, uh, specifically uh, very knowledgeable about the high-tech industry. And even within the high-tech, there are sectors within high-tech that require a very solid understanding of how those companies operate, how they get paid, uh, the flow of uh, cash, uh, uh, overseas banking. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are some banks that specialize uh, very heavily on the high-tech side and others that are uh, doing across the board. So, okay. um, All right. Now, I'm a CPA, um, and so maybe we should talk for a few minutes about you know uh, the help that people may need uh, in this process, particularly people when they're getting started. And maybe we'll be talking a little bit around the issue. There's this guy named Michael Gerber who wrote a book called The E-Myth. I don't know how familiar you are uh, with that book, but anyway, basically where he talks about how so many uh, business owners aren't really entrepreneurs at all because uh, they know how to do what the business does, but they don't really know how to build the business itself. So maybe you can talk a little bit about your experience related and to I that. And I think uh, that's an excellent point. Uh, uh, the small business owner, uh, startups in particular, I think uh, oftentimes they've worked for a company and they say, hey, you know, I can run my own company. Uh, they know how to, to make the widget or how to uh, produce something, but uh, they may not have the expertise how to manage a business because um, too often I see uh, uh, a lack of financial expertise in running the business. Uh, you know, they do a job and then they expect to get paid for it. Well, uh, they maybe have a long list of receivables and no collections. And that takes uh, an expertise in, in collecting on those monies due to you because when we go to make a loan, if we start looking at their aged receivables, if they're 90, 120, 180 days old, uh, we're thinking, you know, this guy business has a problem in, the, in their cash flow. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think, yeah, there's, uh, they need to, I think, uh, understand um, uh, the taxes surrounding the, their business, business taxes. They should have, uh, I think, a, a well-qualified tax person to advise them. Mm -hmm. uh, 
at the ups, uh, at the beginning as well as throughout you know the whole business cycle because uh, with the tax laws uh, shifting uh, from year to year, uh, it could mean the difference between uh, a profitable year or an unprofitable year. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, uh, managing a business is more than just building something or doing something. It, it's mm -hmm. an understanding of uh, the role as a manager or owner or principal. Uh, you know, uh, as companies grow, small businesses, bring in people and they call them CEOs. Well, mm -hmm. what is that role? And then they have the CFO who is supposed to run the finances. So the complexities of a business, even a small one, it takes, I think, uh, more than just uh, the ability to uh, say, hey, I'm now a business owner. Here's my uh, business license on the wall. Mm -hmm. There was a guy a long time ago, I think it was Pear Soap or something like this, and he said, you know, any fool can make soap, but it takes a very clever person to sell it. And so there are these different roles that have to be filled in a business in order for it to be successful, even a small business. So sometimes, as a small business owner, you have to wear these hats. And it means that you have to get these skills or get information or get help, which means that then you're going to have to pay somebody in order to provide that help. And so, uh, so some of those roles, again, uh, you, you have to be able to manage your people. Uh, you have to uh, be able to manage your finances and understand accounting and, and something about how information works. And you have to understand the other things, though, uh, that you need to measure that go beyond the accounting as far as what is driving your business. And very few people really understand that, uh, even few accountants, because they're not educated in it. And so, um, anyway, and then there's just, like we said, the marketing aspect, marketing and sales. So how do you bring the customers in? And then once you get that customer in, uh, how do you uh, uh, show them the benefits of what you're offering so that they're going to want to buy what you are offering and so forth. So there are all these skills, and so it's much more difficult than just knowing how to give a haircut or Absolutely. Uh, or what have you. So, uh, so it's very important to, to understand that, and you have to demonstrate to the banker uh, that you've got these bases covered, that, so that you know how a business operates, and that goes together with the plan, because you have to be able to execute that plan. You know, it's, if we can make up numbers uh, <laughs> to make what looks like a really cool plan, uh, but, but they have to have some substance to them in order for it to be real. Well, yeah. A good example of that, not too many months ago, a gentleman presented a business plan to me. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the plan, I'm trying to find um, his uh, uh, response to how am I going to make money? Mm -hmm. There were a lot of fancy numbers, yes. but nothing that demonstrated there was a plan to make money. Yes. And I just had basically had to turn the customer mm -hmm. away and tell them, uh, you know, I think it's a, you're going in the wrong direction here and somebody's misleading you. So yeah. that's, I think, uh, a banker's responsibility to be very candid with individuals, too, uh, in seeking credit that uh, um, we shouldn't mislead them, but, you know, tell them, you know, some very um, sometimes hard and true facts about uh, maybe it's just not the right time to be doing this. Yeah. Okay, well, Dean, we're out of time. Went by, didn't it? Yes, it did. So thank you so much for being a, my guest. Uh, I hope we can get together possibly another time. And um, folks, I hope that you'll find this uh, discussion to be of value. Uh, we'll have it posted also at our website at financialinsiderweekly.com. Uh, and... Uh, be aware that you can get help and, uh, and feedback and uh, hopefully you can help in getting that small business financing that you're looking for. See you next time on Financial Insider Weekly.